The advice and opinions expressed by the hosts of Autism Live and her guests are meant solely as suggestion and should not be in any way construed as child-specific advice. Any choices you make in determining your child's treatment are completely at your own discretion. Dr. Doreen grand is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen grand Dr. grand Dr. Doreen grand Dr. Doreen grand is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. Good morning and welcome to Ask Dr. Doreen. I wanted to do a whole opening and pretend that I was you, but sitting next to you, it doesn't, this wig, I call it my, my Doreen wig. It's so uh, but good, it does, I love it. It doesn't look it. like you. Um, <laughs> it looks exactly like me. It looks when like you I sent, ate you. When you it's sent <laughs> me a pi the picture yeah. last week, I was like, oh my God, I took it, it was a double take. I was like, wait, is that me? That was <laughs> oh, stop. So I swear, stop. I swear. Uh, well, I showed it to my. I showed that picture to my husband last night, and he was like, "Who is that?" It looks familiar. <laughs> she looks familiar. Who is that woman? I was like, "That would be me, honey." And he was like, "No, no, let me look at that again. It doesn't look anything like you." Yes, because. I love and it. I'm going to take this off in a minute because I, I don't know how you deal with this much I hair. That, I can't. I it's, it. it's making me full on crazy. But anyway, uh, good morning, especially good morning to Bertha, who says good afternoon. So wherever you are, Bertha, <laughs> in the world. And she says you look so beautiful. Well, so I'm trying to channel Dr. Grant. Pichet, but uh, you know, I used to have long hair, but it was long ringlet curls. I would wear it, and but the, I would do it in the like the Julie, Julia Louis Dreyfus from oh, uh, back, from or? Seinfeld that I would take and do a big top knot on the top and have oh all God. the spilling hair. Oh yes, for, yes, yeah, it was very 80s, 90s kind of thing. Anyway, and then I couldn't stand it anymore because can't stand this much hair on my face. Good morning, Laurie. We're so thrilled you're here. Uh, so, so this is for the, also look how much we look like the logo. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> so I got, I got a, I, and I don't do reverse while well. I have to have mine sweeping across my eyes. There you go. Um, I can't take it. There we go. Uh, oh, the big reveal. So I don't know. Did I, did I send you? I thought I was going to send you, but uh, Lori, who's watching, decided that she was going to shave her head too. I heard. Did you see that? I'm all oh, stuck to this. Oh my gosh. So, oh, it's so much lighter and cooler and. Can you see that it's already? Are you happy? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm like the George Papard look. It's white, um, yeah. Yeah. Nice. We we have so many stories about that, but um, mm. I, Laurie, I, th I, I thought you looked great, and you're amazing because she had long hair. I had short hair, and you shaved it off, and she had long hair. So, um, so brave. Hi, vibing with Nisha, and hello, Judy. Uh, we're so excited to see you too, Bertha. We're here with Dr. Grampy Shea. If you guys don't know her, she's a true expert in the field of autism and working in this field for more than 45 years. Hello. Um, crazy accomplishment. Thank and you. if you were with us last week, then you know we did the Autism Network podcast-a-thon. We managed to stay live for 44 hours. Amazing. And found that we still had things to talk about, which it's is true. why we're here and it's back. Because yeah. 44 hours is not enough. Um, but we also, on the last show, uh, as Dr. Grand Pichet was shaving my head, which was hilarious. It was so much fun. Uh, I, somebody sent <clears> me, <throat> Sucho sent me the best picture of you making the spiral yeah, horns yeah, on my that. head with you laughing. Uh, it was, it's like the best picture it ever. It was so much fun. And, um, but uh, we also were sort of celebrating her birthday early because she had a birthday yesterday, if I you didn't did. know. Dr. Grampy Shea had a birthday, just a little one, not a big one. Uh, <laughs> it was a huge one, a huge one. I was being sarcastic. Um, <laughs> but anyway, we celebrate you every day, but especially so when, when we get to commemorate another trip around the sun. I'm so grateful for your existence. Thank you. Thank you. And I include you in my grateful list every single day, as do so many other people. I want to uh, say that DJ wrote and said, I wrote uh, happy, yes, he said happy birthday. I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that. That was so lovely. Uh, um, and also yesterday I had the, uh, you know, amazing experience of a lot of old friends who worked with me at CARD for a long, long time, right, yeah. 25, 30 years were yeah. in touch with me and so on. And I, I think Vince wrote something like that, can you believe that we've known each other since like our 20s or something? And I it's thought, God, think, that's right? in insane. Yeah. 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 I, I was listening to the radio yesterday, and they said something like, 41 years ago today, Haircut 100 yeah. was the number one song. And I went, what? Yeah. 41 years ago? Yes, we're, we've, all, we've all marched on, right? But um, 
Lori says, I had a blast. Can't wait until next year. I'm so willing to do it again with updates. Uh, Lori, so thrilled that you were a part of the marathon. Brian says, good morning, Shannon and Doreen. After the marathon, you feel like family. I'm so glad because you, you always feel like family to us. And Lori said, happy birthday. And Bertha's sending you lots of love. And uh, Prat Pratiba, I hope I said yes. that right, is saying hi. We're so thrilled that you guys are all here. So Dr. Grampiche, as we said, is a true expert in the field of autism. We are going to get down to some questions in just a second, but let's talk about where you can go to put your question in. We're live right now on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch, which I always forget to say. We're also live on about a dozen other places, too. But for those places, if you write in right now on that platform, then it populates here on our screen and we can be having a conversation mm -hmm. almost in real time which is super fun and also I, I, I feel like it you know it feels like the bedtime pass it takes some of the steam out of it because when you mm -hmm. know that you have access mm -hmm. to an expert of this caliber where you can float some questions out now that leads me to do our disclaimer which we always say which is that there's no expert in any field let alone autism that can give individual specific advice so if we all understand that there's no way dr grand Pichet doesn't have eyes on the, on you or the people that you love in your home that are on the autism spectrum. But if you'll write in and tell her kind of what's going on and give her some whys and wherefores, then you know you can hear from her. And a lot of times the questions that you ask them are as interesting as the answers that you provide, mm -hmm. right? Because then it allows you guys to take that information and go back to the expert who does have eyes on the situation so you can get farther faster, which is a wonderful thing that you donate this time. It's, it's, it's my pleasure and also I think uh, it helps a lot when people are live with us because I'll have questions mm -hmm. and they will be able to answer those questions yes. and that allows me to get to know their child a little bit better and be able to really actually hone in on what the issue is. Yeah. And I want to say if, you know, one of the reasons why we did the podcast-a-thon and went around the clock twice uh, was because so many of you had written in from around the world and said, we don't get to watch you live. Right. Um, so we don't get to write in the live questions. And I do want to say that you can still send us questions. You can email me. And that's probably the best way to do it. You email me, and then I'm able to ask Dr. Doreen your question during the next show. And then you just have to watch the next show to make sure that it happened. So Traven is show, our fabulous Traven, who was worked so hard last yes, week. Yes. Oh, my goodness. We're so grateful for him. Um, he's showing you all the ways that you can connect, ways that you can watch the live show, ways, ways that you can watch the podcast, because we do podcast. Um, but if you will, uh, eventually he'll get around to showing you my email, which is Shannon at autism-live.com and if you will email me um, and then if for some reason I don't answer it on the next live show be persistent I always say email me early and often like voting uh, <laughs> because I do I will sometimes it gets past me but I, I don't like that that it gets past me sometimes but it's not because I don't care it's because I am befuddled <laughs> <laughs> and, and there are a lot of questions. We try to get to all of them. Yeah, we Sometimes don't, Sometimes we don't, right, and so we, we'll do our best. Yeah, we do. Good morning, Anna. So thrilled that you're here. So uh, we got a lot to accomplish today, not the least of which is the giant bag of things that maybe we should take them out a little at a time because there's all these, it's all funny stuff because what do you get someone who has given you everything? I haven't figured it out yet. Uh, right? I mean. Well, you're too kind to No. Me. No, <laughs> no, that is not the truth. I started writing you this maudlin, maudlin message last night about where uh, where I think we would be. I think I changed it and went, oh, don't put that all on her. But I, <laughs> I, <laughs> but I was sitting there and I was like, <laughs> oh my and, I was, God. and I was like, you know, because I, I don't have to wonder where would we be without you because I know. I know that my child wouldn't be speaking. I know that my child <sighs> would not be, you know, halfway through his college career. Um, studying to be a writer. I, I know Amazing. that he wouldn't be working with individuals on the spectrum. My husband and I would probably have not stayed together because <laughs> yeah. it would have been yeah. so stressful. Oh my gosh. Um, and I would probably, you know, have left Los Angeles to go live in a shack somewhere on the side <laughs> of a mountain because I would have needed to work full time, you know, helping my son. 
and that is not our circumstances because of you. Oh, well, so God we bless go. you for, thank you for putting, uh, giving <laughs> me all the credit, but well, I Well, I mean, it. really. I'm I, just thrilled that I played any part oh, in please, your life. Oh, please, any you. part, are you kidding me? So anyway, uh, we'll take little breaks like that throughout, but our topic today for today's show is overcoming bedtime challenges, mm -hmm. because it, it, I, look, we just went through a couple of sleepless nights and I'm, I'm still feeling it. And I remember what it was like when we went through every night sleepless night. And I know oh, yeah. um, that for a lot of you, that is your reality. And yeah. the truth is, you, you know, you can want everything. You can want the sun, the moon and the stars and you can want communication and you can want all these amazing things for your kiddo. But if you're underslept and they're underslept, yeah. it's going to be a rough thing. Yeah. So. Um, our starter question today, and then we're going to take questions from you guys. You guys can be writing in your questions. Oh, look, they said hi from Kobe and Rachel. Oh, How that's much awesome. did we love Kobe we love Bird last week? Well, and guys. Rachel too, because I love them both. Uh, which reminds me, if you guys haven't checked it out, the Easter Seals every year does uh, the Easter Seals Disability Challenge. Oh. Um, and it's a film thing where they're given they're given a topic and they're given five days okay. to form teams. And they're given the, the, the topic, it has to surround that, and it has to be this video that they, they create in five days. Can amazing, you imagine? Amazing. And it's for the entire disability community, and then they post all of them. Wow. So they did this a week and a half ago, and they just posted them on Saturday. And what a beautiful Kobe, thought. Right? And they've been doing this. I think this is the 10th anniversary. So we have several of the guests that were on last week who have films, but I especially want to say that Kobe and Rachel did a film together. Rachel amazing. wrote it and, and, and did the editing. She did an amazing job. And Kobe is such, you guys know, he's a brilliant actor. Um, so they have, theirs is called The Question. I want to encourage everybody to go there. Oh, I can't wait. Though. Right? Yeah. Um, but it is a thing where people vote and by viewing. So go check out their video, The Question. Oh, I uh, definitely it's will. It's really good. And, and you I'm, find this on the, the Easter Seals website? It's all or? over Facebook. But if you put in Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge, Perfect. you'll see, I think there's 150 films. So many oh, people wow. did so much good work. I know Danny Bowman was on the show last week. I haven't seen hers yet, but I'm sure that it's lovely. Um, Spec Labs also put in a video I'm that I haven't seen yet. So, de but um, That's but great. definitely check out Kobe's because it's the one that I've seen and it's, oh, I got chills. Amazing. Um, so watch it. They did an amazing, amazing job. Um, and Rachel said, happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Rachel. And I, I just lost it. Laurie said, Dr. Dunning, you're an angel to all of us. You are both appreciated so much. Well, Laurie, you're tearing it up yourself. You yeah, are doing honestly. an amazing, amazing job um, and bringing so many people into the light of possibilities. So we love what you're doing, too. Um, the, and you can find her, Autism Journey with Elijah. Amazing stuff that you guys are doing on Facebook. Anyway, um, I started to say our starter question today is I can get my four-year-old to bed, I can get him to sleep, uh, but a half hour later he wakes up and is up for hours, please help. That's mm -hmm. like so, I, I can just picture this parent because you know you do all the things, yeah. you go through all the steps and you get them to sleep and you go, oh, okay, now I have a minute and they're going to rest and, and it's all going to be okay and yeah. 30 minutes later your night is over. Yeah, so that's actually an unusual one because you know, in all the years, I've, I've gotten so many different questions about sleep. And it is, um, you find patterns. Like, you see a lot of the same stuff happening. A lot of times, it's kids who will not fall asleep. A lot mm -hmm. of times, it's mm -hmm. kids who wake up approximately four or five hours after they've gone to sleep. Uh, you know, there's issues with, like, stuff that happens during the night. The child wakes up and comes to your room, et cetera. Now, half an hour after is actually very, very unique. And so the first thing I would do is, and I hate to tell this to parents because it's not easy um, to find the right place, right? But I would <coughs> really want to check and try to find out what exactly is waking him up. Because if you are actually asleep, it, you're going to go through a cycle of sleep patterns that are half an hour just makes no sense. It's not in the sleep cycle, right? So you're not even reaching REM in half an hour. So 
we have to figure out what's causing him there, uh, to wake up. There could be external things, for instance, noise that's happening in the environment that you might not even consider to be noise because to us, a lot of things are background sounds, but mm -hmm. to our kids, they are startling. Like maybe sprinklers turn on, maybe, I don't know what, but uh, if you can, maybe just sit around uh, in that half hour, sit in his room or find, you know, put a camera in his room and see exactly what's going on. Of course, other things that sometimes wake our kids up are also seizures. And sometimes these seizures can be subclinical. So you don't necessarily see the seizure, but it's brain activity that suddenly occurs and wakes the child up. And the only way to really tell is to do a 24 hour EEG, which is hard on parents. A lot of universities that have, I don't know exactly where you are, but universities typically have sleep uh, research centers or sleep centers and a lot of times they will do this. They will either have an actual location where you can take your child there and they will observe and measure everything that's going on or they will, they now have these amazing kind of EEG caps that are hard to initially get used to, but you know, people can help get your child used to it. And it's just like a little cap that you put on and it has electrodes all the way inside and measures what is exactly going on with your child. So I would definitely start there because as I said, waking up half an hour after they fall asleep is a little unusual. Now, other things, like when people tell me that the child wakes up like four hours after, yeah. it's usually the effect of melatonin. Yeah. A lot of parents use melatonin, <coughs> excuse me, and melatonin is t great, it's completely uh, harmless, but you, it will tend to wake the child up about four hours after they fall asleep. So. That's another thing, if you are using melatonin, maybe don't or talk to a physician and combine it with something like Benadryl, diphenhydramine, which is pretty innocuous and it's not gonna hurt your child. And you can give Benadryl to babies, newborns, so it's not a big deal, but it will uh, kind of wipe out the, the edginess of melatonin, which no matter what you do, melatonin kind of it increases your melatonin production and then it as soon as you hit four to six hours you just wide awake wow so that's uh, another thought the other thing is um, is there some other type of physiological thing that could be happening like for instance does your child use the bathroom before going to sleep I don't you know sometimes kids will wake up because they have an urge to go to the bathroom these are all things that I really suggest you find out first before we talk about sleep, how to manage when the child wakes up in the middle of the night. So, I mean, I'll talk about the treatment, but I wanna make sure you check out the reason first. That's like more important to me. There we go. Now, when a child wakes up, it's often what we do is we will go in and find out what's going on and sometimes we'll give the child a glass of water or a lot of parents because they're so exhausted will just allow the child to come and sleep with them and that is it's amazing how fast the body will uh, condition to waking up because of those two reinforcers anything edible or drinkable, anything, like even water, will get you in a schedule of waking up. And the second thing is obviously, if they're allowed to come to your bed, the comfort and safety and just being with you is so positive of an experience that that will become a habit. Yeah. So that's, it's hard to, to tell you not to do that, but the truth is, that is what's causing them to wake up because the body just kind of becomes conditioned to that. So we start there, which is if either one of those things, if you're giving a drink, you need to stop it. And I know it's very, it's much harder said than done. So a lot of parents will say, I can't do that. And like he's, he falls asleep with his milk or with his bottle or something. So you have, if you can't do it suddenly, you have to do it gradually 
reduce the amount of the drink and just stop it. Um, if you can do it suddenly, it's important to do it. What will happen, um, and I'll tell you either whether it's drinking or eating or it's coming to your bed, but you basically have to stop that behavior from occurring. So, and when you do stop, um, the child will have two or three nights of complaining, not sleeping. It gets worse before it gets better. Like, I want to be very honest about that. Yeah. It's not like the child's suddenly going to be like, okay, no more drinking. Oh, I can't go to their bed? Okay, I guess I'll just go back to sleep. That's not going to happen. It's going to be two or three nights of you being awake because your child will continue to try. If it's, if it's a matter of drinking something, they will cry, maybe be upset, uh, and then they'll get used to it. If it's a matter of coming to you, they'll keep coming and you'll have to keep taking them back or not even allowing them. Like a lot of times I'll tell parents, honestly, it's easier if you reverse this and instead of allowing the child to kind of walk over to you and spend the night with you, you put a cot in their room and you spend the night in their room, actually right next to them to begin with, and then every night you move your cot away one inch. And actually, as you do that, the child will gradually get used to it. There will still be at night where you're a little bit too far, and you'll just have to stay there until the child gets used to that distance, and then gradually you will start to put your cot outside the door. And it, it'll, it'll be bumpy, but it's the most gradual way of doing this. Some parents choose to do it. Other parents will be like, no, he's got to get used to it. So I just, they, they don't allow the child out of the room and the child does go back to sleep. Now, it's just tough on us. Like I went through this with my third child. It's very, very tough on parents because your child's crying and feeling very much like, it's just, it's a, you're very vulnerable. You're tired, you're exhausted. The whole time your mind is playing tricks on you. Yeah. And it's kind of like, why am I doing this to myself? Why don't I just let him come sleep with us? Yeah. And the reason you don't let your child do that is because it might be okay when they're three or even five. It's not okay when they're 17. Right. So, and it'll become a habit and it'll become harder and harder to break. Yeah. I think, you know, all the things that you listed, um, except for one, and one is that, I, I'm going to speak for myself, is that, when he was little and I realized all the things he was missing mm -hmm. and all the things that he wasn't getting, I tried to compensate wherever I could. Mm -hmm. And so part of it was that I told myself that by giving him that comfort of coming to bed and sleeping with us, yes. that I was giving him something because he didn't have other things during the day that he couldn't just skip off to Gymboree like the other kids. Yeah, and part of it was a lie because it was more comfort yeah. for me too, yes. but it was the lie that I told myself. And I just, I just feel the need to say to people, if you listen to everything that Dr. Grampiche said, and there was a part of you that was like, yeah, I'm not doing that, I want you to just take a breath for a second and ask yourself why, yeah. and go through all the emotions yeah. of yeah. all of it because Long term, we didn't get to the really good stuff until I got rest and he got rest. And the truth of the matter is, as much as I told myself, but it's comfort to him in the middle of the night, it really wasn't. Yeah. yeah. It was all of the things and I didn't have the, I didn't have the, the rest the to to be able to see that clearly then yes. but i can now and i can tell all of you you get to better days if you will do what dr grampiche is asking it's hard it's very hard because we have guilt as yes. well right i mean it's you know not to compare but last night like i took right now my daughter's dog is also staying with us so yes. we have four dogs in my house <laughs> So I took them all out to the backyard, and then I wanna, they all come through the doggy door, except for my daughter's dog, who's uh -huh. a rescue, who has not learned to do that. Right. And so he was outside for about 45 minutes, uh -huh. and I didn't realize it. And I had so much guilt, I could not go to bed. Like I sat with this dog and held him for an hour and I was telling yeah. my husband, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe we left him outside for 40 minutes. You know, I just yeah. had, and that's yeah. what you do. It's natural. And yeah. when it's your child, it's a thousand times more. You yeah. feel guilt and you're thinking to yourself, I have to just hold him. This is, 
he needs this love. And give your child as much love as you want during the day, right? But they need their sleep. You need your sleep. They yeah. need their sleep. Let's talk about this. If your child is, it has interrupted sleep, they are not producing neurotransmitters, which is the most vital thing to their condition, actually. So in order to be able to learn, they need to have the appropriate neurotransmitter production. They need to sleep because of that. They will just, their health, you know, it's so important for them. And I promise you, it only takes, there's, it will not take more than a week if you um, actually just, you know, do it right. Yeah. If you give in, if you keep giving in, um, it will last, it'll keep going. I've had couples right where families who have come to me and said, yeah, he's 10, it's just, he sleep, mom says he sleeps with me, dad sleeps in another room. Yeah. And that happens, and it happens frequently, and it's just not good for you as a family. And, um, you know, it, it's not a matter of comfort, honestly. You can make their room as comfortable as possible, give them every possible wonderful thing, and uh, make it happen. It's tough. Uh, Lori had written in before all this, and she said, oh, this really, uh, this is really close to home for me. I just went to the doctor, and they told me to get rid of the cups at night, which yeah, you said, yeah, stop with yeah, the drinking, yeah. and limit his intake of fluid, and it's okay to give him melatonin at night. Uh, we'll give him two gummies. It doesn't help him yeah. uh, asleep, but it helps him to go to bed. He doesn't wake up like walking around the house. He doesn't do all that, but he sits up, and, and then... Uh, and then goes down, nose down. This happens about three times a night. He still sleeps in my bed, and we limit electronics. I hope this is nothing. I have a lot on my plate right now. Yeah. And I and I feel yeah. that, Lori, and I hope that you heard what yeah. Dr. Grampy Shea said about the sleeping in your bed, because it, like, and I hear the, the, the whole thing about you have a lot on your plate right now, and, and that's being made harder by the fact that you're not getting good rest. But I do think it's almost like a boot camp situation where you got to set aside some time. And I think it's better when you have somebody in yeah. cahoots with you, whether it's your significant other or you call your best girlfriend and say, can you come in and sleep here for a couple of nights? Because you don't make good decisions in the middle of the yeah. night. In the yeah. middle of the night, you make decisions about like, what's the thing that's going to be able to get me back to sleep yeah. sooner as opposed to later. And that just perpetuates this. That's right. And Lori, you are actually amazing, and you've already kind of gathered a village of people around you. Yeah. You're so amazing with that. I suggest that you get a couple of other people who are going through a similar thing, and you kind of do a little, you know, a week of this. Like, and everybody's going to be, it'll, become, it'll be difficult because everyone's losing sleep, obviously, but at the same time, you'll like support each other through it, right? It, it, when, during the podcast-a-thon, I was talking about getting yourself ready to do a potty training few days. This is even more important, I think, and you kind of need to select a time when there's no travel. As Shannon said, you gotta have support and friends because it's just like when you have a newborn baby, right? And you get someone to come and help the first week and that's all you really need. You need so that you can trade off, so that you're not the only one dealing with it at night. Um, and then it just becomes a habit that they will actually stay in their own room. This is very, very important. Yeah. And like I said, uh, talk to the doctor who suggested melatonin and ask if it would be okay to have a combination of, of Benadryl and melatonin, possibly not as much as melatonin as you're giving him, but, uh, and also like a very low dose of Benadryl. The two together will help keep him asleep. I always used to enjoy, it, that it, for me, any kind of melatonin will wake me up, mm -hmm. but um, I used to talk about tranquil sleep, yeah. which is a chewable melatonin, which is pretty good, and it has theanine in it, which helps you stay asleep a little bit, um, but still wakes me up so you know you i think you that's important too is to have a medication and also yeah i mean we don't give kids like heavy duty sleep medication that just no. doesn't it's not approved but there are other types of things that will help a child get drowsy like benadryl there you go uh pratiba uh 
Pratiba, I hope I'm saying it right, says, my son, six years old, is very, has, is very aggressive behavior towards others. And I'm going to ask her if you would do us a favor and, and write in and be as specific as possible about which behaviors, when is it happening, who is it happening towards, and then we'll come back to it. Is that OK with you? That's a great idea. And I really want to try to help um, address this for you, Pratiba. But we need to know specifically when it happens. What are the circumstances? Is it when you ask him to do something? Is it when? Um, something around him is bothering him, he's trying to get out of a situation, please let us know a little bit more detail. Okay, Judy has written in and says, Shannon, I'm sorry, not a good time to ask is a perfect time to ask. Uh, she, you sent me two emails, Judy, and m much apologies. I left here a hurting unit the other day and just unplugged for four days. So I have not yet seen emails, and I'm going to be getting uh, caught up on emails directly after this show, but I can tell you that you did, I remember you won a Discovery Toys gift card. We really want to thank Discovery Toys. Yes. We were able to give away a bunch of $25 gift certificates throughout the podcast-a-thon. I remember very distinctly you winning one, Judy, so you absolutely um, are a winner, and you should be getting those emails today and tomorrow I'm sending them. And my apologies that I took longer off than I thought I was going to take, but it was really necessary. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and you but still haven't caught up on no, sleep. No, I'm not caught up on sleep because it takes me forever because our bodies, you know, things interrupt, and there we go. Uh, I am saying hello. Hey, y'all. Hey to uh, the owl feather. I, I am newly obsessed with owls. I don't know if I've told you oh, this. Oh, And so this. I love this, and you sent us uh, hearts and owls and owl. I... I it was a couple of years ago that somebody showed a picture of owl's legs. I had no idea that owl, I thought owls had these very long bodies and these little feet, <laughs> and they don't. They have long feathers that yeah. cover these long, long, yeah. skinny little, who knew? That's insane. And I'm obsessed now owls. With owls are the best, Shannon. You, so now that you told me this. Yes. What, um, I have a home in Florida, uh -huh. and there's an owl that sits uh -huh. at the top of the door. So whenever you enter or yeah. exit, this owl is sitting there looking down. It's the cutest thing uh -huh. ever. Like, I worship this owl. It's so adorable. You have to go. At our old place that we lived, we always had owls. Oh, they're uh, like, amazing And animals. they would hoot even in the middle of the day, and I, and I would always talk to them and go, what are you doing? Yeah. It's the middle of the day. You're supposed to be asleep now. Um, and then now where we've moved, we have every animal except for giraffes and <laughs> owls. I swear to you, we were like, you know, did we rent a zoo? We ha I mean, we've had the, the raccoon oh, yeah. on our patio that stood up, and it was five feet tall in yes. the middle of the night. We've had yeah. possums, the, the, the great that possum attack of, of 2020. <laughs> I mean, we've had everything. We've had parrots, roving parrots that like oh my the gosh. people apparently let loose in the 30s, and there's a band of them now oh my that would gosh. come and live in the tree. We have everything under the sun. And the other day when I was out planting the garden, um, I have these two hummingbirds Aww. that came and like were this close to my face. And, and I talk to animals. I just do. And so I had this lovely conversation with them. But anyway, I'm obsessed with owls. So Owl Feather, gra glad that you're here. Um, love seeing that. I just think of owls in their legs and I crack up. It makes me the happiest <laughs> of people. I'm going to have to look now. <laughs> it's have you ever seen the pictures? It's no, hysterical. No, I I've just seen their feet. I've never really seen their owls. These long, and they have like little feathers on them, so they look like little stockings. <laughs> They're hilarious. You must go look at a picture of owl legs. It's too, too funny. Anyway, uh, Brian says, you don't have to address this now, but we're going to, Brian. Uh, but it would be interesting to hear your thoughts. I am hesitant about medication, but there was a very positive recent publication recently that, uh, that was highlighted an anti-seizure medication, yeah. uh, Lamictal, uh, has very promising results to minimize ASD problems and behaviors is still in human my studies. Um, but he's asking if you want to look into it, Dr. Doreen. Yeah, no, uh, Brian, a lot of people do uh, use Lamictal, actually. It's not uncommon. Um, that's something you need to discuss with your pediatrician or neurologist and uh, if you if you feel like it is something that your child needs then obviously go for it <clears throat> I generally feel that when a child has challenging behavior I don't really want to medicate 
medicate that because I feel like challenging behavior is some form of communication and I kind of want to know why they're having that challenging behavior. In other words, if a child tantrums, I, I want to know what's causing them to tantrum. Sometimes what's causing them to tantrum or bite or you know aggress or whatever is just frustration and when I teach them more communication and increase their reinforcers and, and reduce demands, things become fair for them and then those behaviors go down, right? They decrease and they learn that, oh, I can communicate in better ways, in other more adaptive ways. Sometimes what's causing their aggression or frustration is are things that are internal, like there's a massive amount of anxiety. And when I treat the anxiety, it helps the child's uh, aggression or challenging behavior go away. Um, sometimes it's other things, you know, like it could also be sensory issues are causing the child, to, uh, it could be sleep issues, it could be uh, pain related to gastrointestinal, whatever it is. And, and when you treat those things, those other comorbidities, it helps the child's challenging behaviors. Um, so a drug like Lamictal is okay, but what it does is it's not really going to the cause of it, to the root of it, it's just uh, reducing the occurrence of it. It's similar to Risperdal in that sense that it just kind of reduces your response to, to whatever is causing you frustration. So it's totally fine and I, uh, I think every parent should do whatever they feel is appropriate and helpful. Um, and yes, I know that it help, a lot of parents use the MGTOL uh, to reduce uh, kind of like severe aggressive behavior. You know, one of the many things I love about you, I remember years ago you saying, if all behavior is communication, then we should do everything we can to keep the communication coming, not try to level yeah, it out. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Which yeah. is one of the things I respect about you because there's other people who are like, well, let's try to make that go away when yeah, it's yeah, communication. Yeah. But so I want, there are many things in this basket. I want you to take this one out. Oh. We'll take things out oh. one at a time because this is why, uh, because of that, uh, <laughs> something for your office. <laughs> queen of damn near everything. <laughs> and that's I why that's why she's the queen of damn near everything. I'm because, putting this in my office at home. Oh, there you go. Um, because she it. prizes I communication. Just one of the many things in, in the basket. Okay, we have so many questions coming in. Uh, but there are many things in there. But that, that uh, seemed appropriate right there. Uh, okay, we're saying good morning to our journey, Cameron's new life. So thrilled that you're here with us this morning. Uh, she says we had to make his safe spaces because he's in a loper, oh, yeah. had to get the locks he couldn't figure out, doors and windows too, and I couldn't sleep until I knew he was safe. Well, I mean, of course. Um, but it sounds like you have figured that out, and that is important because when kids elope in the middle of the night, it, how could a parent sleep? Yeah. How could a parent? But yeah. it sounds like you've gotten that under control. Uh, Judy says, what is the cause of an autistic teen sleeping with one leg bent up really high like Shannon is sitting and laying down flat on a pillow? <laughs> no, uh, I don't know. Judy, I have no idea. Um, I will tell you that I will sometimes do this position because it helps my lower back. That's exactly why my, my leg is in this there position you go. today. So I don't know if she feels more comfortable that way and you might want to like get an x-ray of her back and make sure there's nothing going on there. But uh, Or she could have also seen it and is just modeling a behavior that she's seen. But for me, I know that these positions help my lower back and hip. Sciatica. Sciatica, yeah. It's sciatica. Yeah. But you know, if you think about it, the other thing on the other side of it too is if you're having, because I was somebody who had all the, the cramps, the endometrius and all that, uh, endometriosis cramps too, and a teenage girl, I mean, I would sleep that way when I was a teenager because oh, of teen, cramps. Yes. It's a teenager, yeah. Yeah, um, that could very so, well be. That could very so well be. I would look at all of that personally because that's all connected yes. right there. Yes. That if, you, if you're having cramps and you bring one leg up, sometimes it can help. Um, it's all communication. It's all yeah, communication. Yeah, honestly. Um, uh, Toscolo would like to know your opinion, uh, view about in-home ABA versus virtual ABA. Oh, that's great. I really want to talk about that, Toscolo. But 
Can I also address, I see that our journey Cameron's New Life has also talked more about kind of the locks and safety. Uh -huh. I'm actually meeting someone later today to discuss the issue of elopement yeah. because um, I guess people are coming up with some, I'd love to get feedback from our viewers. Uh, a company has designed uh, soles, I guess, that you put in your shoes mm -hmm. that are like for elopement. They're, I guess, for kids on the spectrum as well as individuals with Alzheimer's. And I personally, uh, my feedback was that uh, a lot of kids don't like keeping their shoes on. Yeah. I'm not sure that that's the best way to prevent this, but I do know you had mentioned to me, and I was looking it up this weekend, there are companies that ha produce a QR code that you can yep. put on your clothing, yep. which also, by the way, not that you need this, but for those of you who are still not comfortable at night, I, I feel very safe when everything is locked to the point where nobody can get in or out, but um, the QR codes on clothing are very, very good for elopement, yep. I feel. I think we, that's a fantastic thing. Friends of the show, uh, their parents, in fact, their son went to the same school that my son went to, and and Jay was an eloper. Yeah. Um, it was an issue. And, and so they came up with this out of necessity to help their own child. So their company is called If I Need Help. Yes, and you can, I love that. You can go to their website, ifineedhelp.com, and they have lots of different things. And you can get patches um, to iron on to clothes or to sew on to clothes, or you can get them so that they're printed on the clothes or things to attach. You can get them to attach to the shoe. Uh, they have all kinds of things, and, or, and there are kits that go together. And these are parents who have been there and done that. So that's, that's awesome. ifineedhelp.com. So they're like, you can sew the patch on, iron the patch on, stick it on, like yep. stick stuff to That's fabulous. Yeah. That's fabulous. Um, and what the, and, and then you help. customize, you have control over when, um, when somebody scans the QR code, what it tells them. And, it's, and you can put all kinds of information. And that. we've heard from the police that it's been that. really helpful when somebody sees somebody and they do the, the scan and that they've been able to reunite them with family members ever so much quicker. It also is a signal to people that, you know, something else is going on. Because I think sometimes people are just, they look the other way and don't realize. Yeah. yeah. Um, so sorry, now going back to Toscolo's yeah. question. Um, okay, so... Uh, there's in-home ABA, there's center-based ABA, which means ABA that's occurring in, in a clinic. And then there is a virtual, which is something new that started during COVID. Yeah. And I will tell you that we did studies that showed that uh, center-based ABA was the most effective. Um, I think that's just because, you know, people at a center are more work oriented, their supervisors are there, um, there's a, a less distraction, so your child is just getting a lot more learning opportunities. Um, that being said, home-based is, is necessary for some skills, like if I'm teaching a child potty training, I'm going to want to be in his home. Uh, if I'm teaching him any kind of generalization of skills to the home, I want to be in his home. So. For a lot of generalization purposes, there's going to have to be an aspect that's at home. Now, virtual, I will tell you that is, is the least effective when it comes to actual therapy because it's very, very hard to keep a child focused on teaching something on, on a screen. Um, it also makes it very difficult for you as the therapist to give them stimuli, there's all this stuff that you do in ABA in, in like discrete trial teaching, which has to do with manipulation of the stimuli, like putting stimuli out in a specific order, in a different order, putting two out with distractors, putting one, it's just all this stuff shaping, uh, like prompting the object being closer. It, there's all this stuff that requires your hands and it's very hard to do all of that stuff on a screen. Um, it's just extremely hard or impossible and also you're not there to directly give reinforcers i mean so you know it's a lot lot harder there are ways that you can do a little bit of it if it's a child who is higher functioning less affected by autism able to pay attention for long periods of time 
requires less physical reinforcers, can, can be rewarded by just things they see on the screen, then yeah, you could do a little bit of ABA on virtual, but realistically, no, it's not, there's no way it's gonna be as effective as a person sitting in front of you. Supervision online can, is, is probably about, almost about the same because you can observe someone working with a child, give them a lot of feedback, that kind of stuff I could see. And in fact, it makes it possible for supervisors, BCBAs, to see more children, to see more therapists, BTs, to give better feedback and so on. So I always supported doing supervision online, but I cannot imagine doing a lot of therapy virtually. The only time that I heard during the pandemic when parents were seeing tons of progress were when, when what actually was happening was that the parent yes. was doing the therapy and they were being the, exactly. supervised exactly. by the therapist. Exactly. And in that case, the parent learned so much, the child learned yes. a lot. Yes. I still think it's better to have somebody else besides the parent because we have so much baggage when we sit down to do therapy with well, our children. Well, and you have a life. You right. Have a, you well, know? yeah, and who has the time to do right. this full time? Um, During so. COVID, it actually worked out okay because a lot of parents were not working. Yeah. But I think that that it's, uh, and as I'm glad you brought that up because if a parent is available the whole time or if someone is available the whole time and is able to do all these things, yeah. then yes, you learn a oh, lot. They so learn for, so I, much. I also think that it, virtually you can receive parent training, but I don't think actual ABA therapy. Yeah. And they went on to say that um, part of the issue is that the centers are filled up with Medicaid beneficiaries, especially in Texas and in Dallas. But I think, you know, you I, I, like fight to get your child face-to-face uh, -face services. Yeah, if you if you the centers are full, forget it, just do in home. The diff, like go get therapy in home. Like that is the way we used to do it for decades. So yes, get therapy in home. That's how I had it's, it. It's great to have therapy in home, and as long as you can really make the uh, environment kind of uh, distraction-free, uh, you'll be just as good as being in a center. Okay. Um, okay. So Lori wants to know. Thank. She said thank you. And could night terrors cause sleeping problems in a continuous pattern? Yes, they could. Night terrors definitely could be causing issues. If it is night terrors, you'll know right away, because the child uh, is not just waking up. They're waking up screaming. Yeah. So, yeah, that's another thing to consider. Thanks for bringing that up, Lori. Sarah has said with twins, it's so difficult. I can't even imagine, I know. Sarah. And she says, you can't put them in the same room. They would wake each other up. We decided to separate them. One would sleep with grandma and the other one with me, but they both fight every night to sleep with me. Yeah. She says, we don't have a separate bedroom for the kids since I've called my parents for support. It's so 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 hard but i also know that yeah. with these two little guys they are making tremendous progress that's awesome that they have sarah. grown so much and they're really you uh, everything that you write in sarah i'm so impressed uh with how much language um and and i just wonder because i'm always a big fan of wearing them out uh, yes. like physically yes. wearing them out. Yes. And I mean that in the best possible way. I mean like Disneyland wear them out. When people go, well, you know, we were talking about making children so tired. We, we never go, oh, how abusive is it to take them to Disneyland? Yeah. But I, but you know, like physically making sure, like you, these kids are in therapy a lot during the day, but I'm wondering like, do they get to have how much physical? Physical activity, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that's a very good but, point. But any advice also, for her? I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do with schedules because if you have a child who's awake during the night, another thing that we tend to do as parents is we will worry about them. So we'll let mm -hmm. them sleep in in the morning. Mm. Don't do that. Wake them up even though they haven't had a lot of sleep at night. Like keep them on a schedule. Schedule is vital. Believe it or not, like our bodies um, acclimate to a schedule really fast. And then th they just realize this is bedtime and this is waking time. And also, you know, I, I mean, in your situation, Sarah, you can't do much about it right now, but when you have a room for the child, I have found that a lot of children will actually ask to go to their room for bed 
if they have a lot of reinforcers in their room that they wouldn't normally have access to otherwise. So, Absolutely. But Ab I, Sarah, don't worry about it. You have so much going on right now. If you don't have a space for the twins, there's really nothing you can do about it. Once they're a little bit more manageable and your parents maybe are not there, then you can set up that room and then one by one you can transition the kids into their room. There we go. Uh, Bertha says, happy birthday to you and many blessings Thank to you. come. She says, my granddaughter does not sleep well and then she falls asleep at school. Yeah. Uh, which yeah. is what happens, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and you have to, Bertha, tell the school they cannot let her sleep. That's part of the problem. Like her routine, her schedule has been to sleep at, at school. So. And then she goes on to say that she herself is having a hard time going to sleep because she says she has nightmares since the hurricane that hit us six months ago. Oh, my gosh. Which, I mean, if that's, if that's affecting you, imagine how that's affecting your granddaughter. Yes. We, you know, we all, it's so interesting to me, whenever we change the clocks for um, daylight savings time, it messes us all up for a week. It does. All of us it does. for a week. It does. And, and, I, and I always say, isn't that fascinating? Because the light changes by about a minute and a half every day yes. for all of us, and we, and we don't notice it. But change it by 59 minutes, and we're all thrown off. Like traffic is, so th is thrown off, and people get in more accidents so because we're thrown off. So imagine if it's having that big of an effect on you, what effect is it having on her? Yeah, absolutely. And then be kind to yourselves, right? And also, Bertha, I mean, I, I just like downplayed then talked about melatonin for a while but one of the things that is fantastic about melatonin is that it does help you fall asleep if you yourself are having a hard time you might want to look online and, and purchase some tranquil sleep it's chewable very easy and you will fall asleep I am also a huge fan of the calm app um, especially the Matthew McConaughey <laughs> factor. And I was so messed up during the podcast-a-thon because it was key for me to get through the podcast-a-thon that there were times when I would have two or three hours off and I had to sleep oh, during that best. time. And I can't go to sleep, but my Calm app was messed up and I couldn't get in. Oh my God. And it really threw me off because if I can't have my Matthew McConaughey to put it's me so to good. sleep, it's crazy. it takes me at least an hour and a half to go to sleep and I didn't have the time. You know, so, I want to really actually good. say, you guys, there's a lot of really good stuff out there now. Yeah. It, yeah. Calm is one of them. There's, um, I actually just go on my podcasts and I look, and there are some sleep meditations yeah. that are brilliant. They're amazing. And all you do is you just listen to this voice telling you to relax your body. And yeah. it is like they're generally about 30 minutes. And I, most of the time, well, some of the time I'm listening to them like for four hours because I'm <laughs> wide awake, but like a lot of times they're very effective, so. Uh, Brian, who wrote in uh, before about the medication, said that focus and inability to stay on task and life skills long term is the major concern. That's why he was asking about that. And he said, thank oh, okay. you so much. So um, we should talk about that for a minute, Brian, because when you say focus and inability to stay on task, <clears throat> my first instinct is to think ADHD. So I don't know your child, but I would definitely want to get them evaluated for ADHD. Um, there, are, there are some really good medications out there now for focus and staying on task. Um, so, you know, for instance, there is an actual, uh, is it classified under the, <coughs> SSRIs, but it's for, for focus, which is Stratera, and it's, some, it's a really good medication. You might want to talk to your doctor about those types of medications as well and see if that benefits your child more. I have to ask you, because we started a little bit late. Can we go a few minutes longer? Absolutely, Are, are you yeah. available? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, I want to go a little bit longer. Um, so I'm saying hello to Helen and I think Lillian. I saw Lillian in there somewhere. Uh, Melody said, hello, good evening from Rock of Gibraltar. I, I just, I, that sounds like I the love most it. Yeah. I want to go to Rock of Gibraltar. Uh, since I discovered my son had autism recently, his sleeping pattern has changed. He goes to bed early, wakes up early, but before he was diagnosed for seven months, he used to wake up mid-afternoon and be awake all all night awake. Also, he is very particular in texture and feeling in bed material and yep. pillowcases. And the way it is placed, same pajamas, does a weighted blanket help and oh, much yeah. appreciated. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up. It was in my mind to talk about mm -hmm. weighted blankets earlier. 
there's a lot of cool stuff out there oh, right yeah. now. There's weighted blankets for sure help, but you have to get the right weight because sometimes kids feel very like if it's too heavy, they just they're uncomfortable with it because they feel like it's they they can't breathe. So I would start out with a low weight, and then if you need to increase it, you can increase it. They're very very helpful. But there's also other stuff. For instance, there are bed sheets that are actually kind of like, they're like a cocoon almost. Mm -hmm. They keep you, they, like the top bed sheet also goes around the bed so that it like really keeps you tight in the bed. I said cocoon and it reminded me there's actually a sack mm -hmm. as well that you can go inside and it really like, kind of keeps you very nicely supported on all around. And that's really good also for kids who tend to kick off all their sheets and blankets and, and they're living in cold spaces. So that type of stuff helps a lot. Um, and I'm glad that you've gotten into a different schedule now because yeah. like waking up mid-afternoon is super difficult. This is kind of the stuff that also happens when you are jet lagged, right? I mean, yeah. I, sometimes I think our kids are on perpetual jet lag. Yeah. And there's so many things now. Have you seen the dog beds for humans now that they, it's it's like a furry bed. Yes. It's like a beanbag yes. chair that's yes. flat with a with a uh, an edge around it that yes. I keep thinking, my gosh, I think that would have been really effective they when Jem amazing. was, when, when he was little. But uh, I'll tell you something that we got into that I watched Martha Stewart religiously when I was single. And I got myself, because Martha recommended a bamboo hull, not, no, buckwheat hull, pillow. Have you ever slept no, with one of no. these? Oh, it's the best thing ever. And and then I've never slept without a buckwheat hull pillow. And then I got one for Jem eventually. He loved it. He doesn't sleep with it anymore. But I can't, I, when I go places, it's heavy. It's a really heavy pillow. I go to a hotel, that You'll is in my suitcase. Yeah. I yeah. had it with me when I was sleeping here. Yeah. And I had my weighted blanket. Thank you very much. Pillow makes a big difference. And people have their own preferences. Like yeah. for years and years, I loved the Tempur-Pedic type pillows. Uh -huh. And then recently, I just purchased a pillow that is kind of Tempur-Pedic, but it uh -huh. has a, a, a dip in yes, the middle. Yes, a lumbar thing, yeah. And and it's right in the middle. It's like all, it's incredible for me. Like oh, now, I, I can't sleep without it anymore. So yeah, that kind of stuff. And also a lot of people love these body pillows yep. that go all the way around. Yep. Yeah. Used to be they were just long and flat, but now they, they make them, they look like a question mark. Exactly. And now they make these crazy pillows where if you have shoulder pain, you can stick your arm through it. Yes, yes. I mean, there's everything under the sun, and I say try stuff. It's, you know, can be expensive, but uh, Joe wrote in something that I want to get to. Uh, I'm like banging my head here. Uh, they say, I had a speech teacher say ABA hinders speech development and wouldn't accept us if we started ABA. She said ABA takes, takes speech as behavior and this hinders speech versus the play therapy that she does. Now, I, I want to let you say whatever you're going to say, but can I say just briefly that there have been all these schools of thought forever. Sometimes there have been ABA people who have said, oh, if you're going to do biomedical, we won't take you. That mm -hmm. used to be a thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And enough parents stood up and said, how about you treat my child? Yeah. How about you stop telling me everything else that you don't know about, and how about you treat my child? And I have a very allergic reaction to people who say, especially, I mean, if it's something that is not you know, widely accepted by the medical community, and if it doesn't, it, you know, if it if it doesn't have a whole bunch of research behind it, then okay, we can have this conversation. But there is so much research behind ABA being effective, and ABA has turned the the equation. It used to be that, and you'll know these numbers better than me, but it used to be that around 18% of the autism community had language, and the rest was nonverbal. Yeah. And that number has been flipped, and not by speech therapy. Yeah. Don't get me started. It's been flipped by yeah. ABA, and any speech person who would tell you that she was not going to take your child because you were doing ABA, I immediately question everything that they say, think, say, and do. Yeah. That's me as a parent who has a child who was nonverbal and is speaks up a storm, um, and it's because of really good... Yeah informed ABA that was specific to him and that, that was not, nobody ever traumatized him. Um, and yeah. I understand that there are people who were traumatized by bad ABA, but anyway, all right, now I'm gonna shut up and let you speak yeah, through the so expert. I, I just wanna say that uh, 
I would also, I mean, I, I never say this, but I would just get away from that therapist <laughs> because, <laughs> I, you know, if ABA hindered speech development, it wouldn't be the number one approved therapy for kids on the spectrum that is paid for by health insurance and supported by the Surgeon General. So like, I would say they're just wrong. And there are a lot of people, you know, older, older people who were in speech therapy are a little bit offended because ABA came and kind of took over the world mm -hmm. of autism just because it's so much more effective. Um, and they might feel personally angry about it, but it's not okay to say that to you. I think that kids who have ABA, I often say they should also get speech. It can help as long as there's um, a lot of meetings so everybody's consistent with each other. You don't want to be doing one thing in one therapy and a completely different thing in a different therapy. That will cause delays because there's confusion. Yes. Um, we're really out of time now, but I, I do want to say that Lori has said they sell weighted animal pillows as well, and Elijah loves that. He, he picks this out and calls it Mr. Bear. Brian says, thank you, doctor. Can we communicate via chat and email about my son, his slow processing ADHD, his smart IQ held back by his boring kindergarten, mm -hmm. um, and that he thinks that he is uh, twice exceptional. So uh, what I want to ask you to do, Brian, is email me, yeah. Shannon, at autism-live.com, and I know, you know, Dr. Grampiche is so wonderful that um, she picks one family a month that she can have a conversation with. And so there is a waiting list. There's an extensive waiting list. And, and But let me, you know, let's get the process started of you being on that waiting list. And you'll do that by writing to me. The email is on the screen now, Shannon at autism-live.com. And then you have to be patient um, because you are busy and you were supposed to be retiring. And and I, there's a bunch of things in here that are funny about retirement that Thank I guess you. we're not going to get to <laughs> on camera. Um, but um, no, I just, I'm happy to help if I can. Yeah, sure. And I don't usually do like back and forth emails. I'd rather uh, spend an hour and like observe your child on, on virtually and also get a bunch of feedback from you, look at prior tests and stuff and, yeah. and activities right. and then give you kind of a, uh, like an assessment and, and some pointers. Yeah. So please write to me, Brian, so that we get you on that list so that eventually that can happen. And I'm sorry, I don't think we got to all of the comments, but I really want to say to everybody how much we appreciate you on a daily basis being here that your comments and questions help. I, we hope, and I know you guys write in and say how much it helps you to be able to talk to Dr. Grampiche and pick her brain about these things. And I feel bad that Pratiba never wrote back to us about that aggression, and I hope that you will, mm -hmm. um, because I want to know more about that. Um, but uh, I, I want to say it, it means so much to both of us when you write in and ask questions, but it also means something to the people who are watching who don't feel empowered to ask the question yet. And that I know as a parent, I learned so much from the questions that other parents asked. Yeah. But I was like, oh, that didn't even occur to me that I could yeah. have a question about Absolutely. that. So keep writing in those questions. We appreciate it so much. Um, we have got a, a great show planned for you tomorrow, and, and I, of course, cannot remember, but we've got two guests, but I booked them so long ago that I can't remember. I know one of them is about a, an organization called Autism Wish, okay. uh, and about granting wishes, but I cannot remember who the other one was, but I remember saying, I want these to be the two guests right after the podcast awesome. is on. So tune in tomorrow, and we'll have jargon of the day tomorrow, and we look forward to being back with you guys. But thank you, and thank happy you. birthday, and then I, wa you. I want you to be so able to Excited. open thanks all this so much. Um, <laughs> but thanks to all of you and we'll see you tomorrow until then give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too bye 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 for everyone now. don't forget you can watch ask dr doreen live every tuesday morning at 10 a.m pacific time and we hope to see you there